Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R620 server. In this video, we're gonna specifically focus on drives. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R620 server. Do us a favor if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. Uh, this video is going to be spoke, uh, specifically focused on drives. We're going to go over the different types, uh, the speeds, the max capacities. Uh, then we're going to show you how to install them, which is very easy since these are hot swap drives. And then we're going to show you how to test them via Dell Diagnostics, as well as a tool called HD Sentinel, which we really like because it shows you the uh, power on hours and health scores. Uh, so let's just go ahead and uh, hop into this. So. Uh, the three different types are SAS, SATA, and solid state drive. With SAS, you can get speeds of 10K and 15K. I will say with the 15K, you do need to be a little bit careful because uh, sometimes the uh, bearings, the wheel bearings inside of the uh, drives will wear out. Uh, so when you're getting a used 15K, I definitely recommend uh, uh, testing with Dell Diag. Make sure it doesn't uh, pull up an amber light, um, and we'll show you how to do that as well. Um, on the SATA side, you get 7.2K. Um, you can technically put in 5.4s, uh, but that's really more of a laptop speed, so uh, we recommend the 7.2s, which is the most prevalent and what you're really going to get anyways. Um, and on the uh, solid state side, you can get 3 gigabit per second or 6 gigabit per second. Technically, you can put a 12 gigabit per, uh, per second in, but it's not going to actually run at that speed. It's just going to go down to 6 gigabit, which is the max speed uh, that you can get on the uh, 12th gen as a whole for Dell. Okay, So let's go ahead and talk about the max capacity. So on the SAS side, the max capacity is 2.4 terabytes per drive. On the SATA side, it's 2 terabytes. And on the solid state drive uh, side, it is 7.68 terabytes. Now, that is uh, what we've played around with. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody came in and dropped a comment down below that said, hey, we've actually installed more, and I'd love to hear it. So if you have put in uh, larger drives in your 620 at home, uh, please uh, let everyone know. I'm sure some of the, the users out there would love to hear about it, okay? All right, so now that we know a little bit more about the, uh, the speeds and the sizes, uh, let's hop into installing them, and then we'll show you exactly how to test them. Let's get going. All right, so we're going to show you how to install them, which is a very easy process overall. So you'll see we're working on the 8-bay, and we'll do a different chassis video that shows you the different uh, um, form factors for these. Uh, but so let's just say um, in uh, bay 0 over here, your drive failed, and you needed to replace it. It's a very simple process. You're just going to push the uh, circle to make the caddy open, slide out your bad drive or your failure, uh, put it to the side, take your new drive, open the caddy before you install it, slide it in, and it'll just click into place. It's a very, very simple process. Um, you can do it while the machine is on. That's why it's called a hot swap drive. Um, and when you do install a new one, you will see it light up. So uh, again, it's a very, very simple installation, uh, but we wanted to show you how to do it nonetheless, because uh, hopefully this helps someone at home. Go ahead and show you how to do Dell Diagnostics to test the drives, which will also show you how to test a bunch of other uh, components in there as well. And then we'll show you a, a nifty tool that we like called HD Sentinel. Let's get going. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to test your hard drives with Dell Diagnostics. And technically, it's going to cover more than just hard drives. It'll test your whole system um, and other components such as your CPUs, your memory, your NIC, the fans, video cards, and much, much more. But like I said, you can also test your hard drives with this, and it's actually a pretty good way to test them, um, and it's a great way to see if there's issues with those drives. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you want to go ahead and do is boot up your server. And during post, you want to go ahead and press F10 so you can enter the lifecycle controller. Once you're in the lifecycle controller, you want to navigate to the hardware diagnostics tab on the left side. And then you want to press run hardware diagnostics. And you may get a little warning screen, but you just want to go ahead and press yes. And it'll take a little bit of a second to load, but this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. So immediately, whenever we load into Dell Diagnostics, there's a lot of information that pops up. As you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, it shows everything that's going to be tested. On the right-hand side of the screen, there's lots of information about the test itself. Um, you can also navigate to the results and different configurations and also the event log. Um, one thing I do want to mention about Di Dell Diagnostics is that some of you out there, when trying to run the hardware diagnostics, you may get an issue. 
or you may get a warning about the firmware not being supported or the onboard diagnostics not being supported. Um, and in that case, you want to go ahead and you can either do this in Lifecycle Controller itself or you can do it in iDRAC, um, but you just want to go ahead and update that firmware. And we actually have a video later on in the series that covers mass updates. And one of the things that's in those updates is the onboard diagnostics firmware. So stay tuned for that, and that'll give you all that information you need. And like I said, you can also do this through iDRAC as well. So other than that, there's not really much to say about these tests. You just kind of let it run, and this can this can take a while. It can take you know maybe a low end of 20 minutes, up to maybe even an hour, especially if you have more memory in your system. Um, it's going to take a while to test all of that. Um, the more drives you have, that might add some time to it. So it really just depends on your system's configuration. But we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Um, if it has any issues, it'll show you that that test failed. Uh, but if it has a check next to the test, like it does on the left-hand side for all of our items here, then that means the test was successful and there's no need to worry about it. So like I said, we're just going to go ahead and fast forward. All right, so we have finally reached the end of our test. And at the end of the test, we can go to the results tab that's in the middle of the screen, and we can go ahead and scroll through all the different messages. You can also view the event log, so that's pretty helpful. But if you go to the results, you can see a more in-depth information about the test that you just ran. So there's something very specific. It's a great place to look. But overall, that's Dell Diagnostics. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's easy to access. Like I said, you may have that one issue where you may have to update the onboard diagnostics firmware. Uh, but other than that, once you do that, you shouldn't have any issues. All you got to do is navigate to the hardware diagnostics and just let the test run. You can let these run and then just go off, do something else, and come back 10, 20 minutes later. Um, and it's a pretty easy way to, one, test all of the drives in your system and make sure they're properly functioning but it's also a great way to test all of the other components in your system. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now and as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has you know, been in use. And especially if you want to use this for a big enterprise system, you don't want to be using drives that have been, you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool. But as you can see, we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software. It's a really, really cool tool, and like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have a 100% health score, um, while the one at the bottom has a 99%, so all pretty good. When it comes to this drive's power on time, it has over 2,000 days, so this is probably something we would not use, as it is, you know, has a couple years of use. But, you know, that's the beauty of this tool. You can, you can see this type of information, um, and then you can decide on whether this is a drive that you want to use in your data center um, in a enterprise system. So I hope you guys found this video useful, and if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom-built server, or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock, so you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com, sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways guys, thank you for stopping by.